Praise the Lord. I want everybody to always smile because I want you to know that God has your back. And uh, he has your best interest. So when you're out in left field and it starts to hurt, that's just him kicking you to get back on straight. Okay, so it's okay. But just let God do the work that God's going to do. And always smile. Always smile. Always smile. Amen. We have a couple graduations this morning, so I'm going to, again, we are very blessed in this congregation to see people that are way out there, people that come around, and, but I mentioned that, but we're also, you need to understand, way out there versus just out there, they all end up in the same place, whether or not you're just way out there or you're just out there. So if you're not in Christ, you're not in Christ. You either serve one or the other. And so some people go, man, they were way out there, or they were bad, or they were... It's okay, because both of you will burn unless you come in to Christ. And you go, man, pastors, is there any other way of putting that? Not really. Okay? Not really. I just like to be straight up and honest. Okay? Anybody here like to be burnt? Then everybody needs Jesus. That needs to be the question that we ask out there. Amen. All these people that are all shy about it. Do you, do you like being burnt? No. Okay. You need Christ. So, otherwise you're going to get burnt. So, praise the Lord. We got some good guys this morning. And I love them dearly. And I want all of you to know them. One of them I went after for years and years. Whose family were, were good friends of mine also. And uh, his wife, years ago, went through a program. And I'll tell you what, uh, the Silver Valley is a tough place. It really is. I, I went around the Silver Valley, and I just wanted to love on people. And it's amazing how even loving on people, it was very difficult to do without them just slandering you and going after you and biting you. And it's like, wow. But, you know, I saw a lot of people come to Jesus up there. I saw a lot of people come to Jesus so if I were to do it all over again, I would literally do it all over again. So God has been so good to me to allow me to see souls come to Jesus. So one of those souls that I'm so uh, tickled about this morning is Jensen Hill. I want him to come up and I wanted to bring his family with him. <laughs> family, come on up with him. Go ahead, family. All the family can come on up, stand, stand right beside him or behind him. Another person I want to come up, this man, I tell you what, this man's going to serve the Lord. I watched him do it once. But he's a great example of what I'm going to be preaching on this morning, that the Lord can grab you and he can take you out of the miry clay. And at that particular point, it is up to you what you do with it. So I want Jacob Dixon and I want your family to come on up with you if they're here this morning. Right on. Come on up, family. Boy, don't pat me on the back like that. <laughs> Come on up. Thank you, family, for praying for him all this time. Amen. Do we need a seat up here? Is she going to be okay? No, no, okay. Just want to make sure. All right, we're going to listen to their testimonies, and I want their testimonies to be all about what Jesus has done for you. So when I was lost, I was lost, and I was out there in the world, and it wasn't friendly. But man, when the Lord saved me, man, he saved me, and I so thank him for it. So Jensen, I want you to come up. I want you to have a testimony of what God has done. So amen. I love you, bro. I love you. You see this? All right, my name's Jensen. Can you guys hear me pretty good? All right, I gotta... Just keep the mic to your mouth, they'll hear you. Gotta keep the mic to my mouth. I got some stuff because I've been crying. I've been crying for the past 63 days, actually. 
And so I've been called uh, the captain of the crybabies. Uh, kind of like a little baby, baby Huey, all kinds of different names, but Jensen is my name. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from the Silver Valley. Um, my, uh, my parents divorced when I was younger, middle school, thir around 13, 14. I started using methamphetamines. And by the time I was 15, 16 years old, I'd already got out of quit school and, and just lived a life of me, just living for me. Um, by the time I was 22, I figured that I should probably try to get a girlfriend and uh, grow up a little bit, but it didn't work. I didn't, I didn't, I was always missing something. Something was always missing. Yep. And I, uh, I heard of this guy right here, Pastor Tim. Um, was sending a lot of my friends to San Diego to uh, Calvary, Ranch. Calvary Ranch to go find Jesus. And I figured that's where I needed to go. And so I asked him and uh, he sent me. And uh, I got to meet a lot of good people and the seed was planted, but I didn't get it. I still feel like I needed to try to do it on my own. And he let me do it for another 18 years. Boy. And uh, I've done a lot of, a lot of damage, um, splitting up my different families and haven't seen my son in a while. And uh, the day before I came in here, I was, I was, I, I needed Jesus. I just kept saying, I need Jesus. I was broken. Yeah. Finally, I was broken enough to where I needed something else it was man it was it was beautiful it was beautiful because i got a hold of mj and and they let me come back in here and and i uh met steve hemming oh my gosh that guy love you to death i mean i came in and i was like I, he's he's like i love you and i was so broken i was like you love me he's like jesus loves you and he held the Bible out and he goes, do you believe this is the living word of God? And I said, yes, I do. And after that, it just kept coming and coming and coming and right on. the emotions and, and, <laughs> and the things that were lifted off of me. Um, it was all because of Jesus, because I gave him everything that I had, every single thing bad, everything that I, that I felt bad for everything that I did to other people or I had to give it all to him and realize that he forgives me. He gave us his son to die on the cross so that we may be forgiven. And that's a tough one. That's a tough one. You have kids and, and you think about the sacrifice he made for us. It is unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable to, to, to think that he loves us that much. And so I finally let that go, let, let my son go and then know that he is, he's, he's Jesus' kid. We're all Jesus, we're all God's kids. Yep. And that once I did that, I've been crying and I've been happy and I have not, yeah, I've done a lot of crying and I don't feel like I need to be anywhere. Like for the first time in my life, <laughs> I got a binky. <laughs> for, <laughs> for the first time in my life, I feel, uh, <laughs> that is cold. <laughs> he'll be, he'll be forgiven. <laughs> uh, for, uh, I guess what I'm saying is that we can all be forgiven, man. You just That's gotta, right. you just gotta ask and, and have faith. Right. And, uh, I believe that Pastor Tim and all, all you guys that have been at the ranch helping me, every, every brother here, every testimony, every testimony that I've heard, I heard Padula say, through the blood of the lamb and through your testimony, and, and that is so true. Good. I mean, I had to hear it. I mean, the belief and faith, man, faith. You got to have faith because without faith and love, Yep. Man, he loves us.
loves us so much. I like what the side of your Bible says right there on the on the side. How literal. It says literal. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to learn. I'm I'm not the. Yeah, I'm not the best at uh, remembering verses and stuff, but um, I love Jesus and I like telling everybody that. So, you know what I mean. Introduce your family. I'm going to introduce my family. This is my dad, Randy. Love you, Randy. Bless you, man. My mom. This is my mom, Nadine. And then these are my friends. This is her friend, Andy, my friend, Andy. Yep. Praise the Lord. And this is, this is an important man in my life, too. His name is Steve Johnson, so... Just introduce me to you guys. Yeah, no, no. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You want to say anything to your family? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I better say something. Oh. It's okay. Um, I just want to... Oh, I just want to tell you guys that... Uh, that I'm sorry. Uh, that I'm sorry for the things that I've done, and 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 it was, you know, it was all my decisions, my decisions on my own, you know, um, decisions that I made on my own I, were terrible. I couldn't make decisions, and I know that now. I know that uh, only through Jesus Christ can I make the right decisions, because He's making them for me. And I just want to tell you guys that I'm lucky to, uh, and I'm grateful and I'm thankful that I made it here. You know? So, sorry, you guys. I love you. Right. Right All on. you guys. Bye bye. Thank you, Jacob, come on up, brother. Yeah. Jacob Dixon. Good morning, church. Um, first off, I'm going to introduce my family. This is uh, my grandpa, John. This is my dad, John. This is my brother, Connor. This is my grandma, Mary. This is my grandma, Patty. This is my grandpa, Gary. This is my sister, Kelsey. And that's my mom and my niece, Maya, right there. These are my friends from church. I want to tell you guys a little story about the power of prayer. Um, so when I was incarcerated back in July, um, I was mad, I was irritated, um, I was a little embarrassed. There was definitely some pride there. And uh, the night before I had court, um, I remember praying with some men, um, Derek Wilson, who gave his testimony last weekend, and another man that comes to church here, uh, Kenneth Flowerdew. And uh, we just prayed for God's will to be done in this situation, whatever it may be. And uh, to be honest, it wasn't, I didn't pray with much, much uh, expectation or hope, but uh, man, God is so faithful, even when I wasn't. And the next morning at church, um, some crazy guy by the name of John Badula was there. And uh, he was there with my parents, and uh, I was able to make the decision to, to come into the ranch. Um, there's been a couple verses that's been on my mind throughout this whole time at the ranch, and I'd just like to share them with you guys. They're in uh, 1 Peter cool. chapter 1, uh, 22. Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And uh, Praise the Lord. It just, this verse really means a lot to me. Um, we live in a world that's it's always changing. You know, morals change, ethics change, trends change. Um, they even want to you know, redefine the definition of marriage, and I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Um, but on the flip side of it, um, God is just so, 
God is just so faithful, so, so, so faithful yep. to me. And um, I'm just so grateful to have him in my life. Um, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I love that verse. Um, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, I just want to read some words from uh, A.W. Tozer about the eternity of God. You need God, for God is your eternity. You need God, for God is your tomorrow. You need Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ is your tomorrow. He's your guarantee of that which will be. He's your resurrection and your life. And when the sun has burnt itself out and the stars have been folded up like a garment, God will still be. For God dwells in an everlasting now that nothing can get to. And he takes his children who believe in his son into his bosom, into the heart of the everlasting now. That's why I believe in the communion of saints. I do not believe that one saint that leaves the earth goes anywhere but into the heart and bosom of God to be a timeless, endless, forever saint. And I believe that all these great Hebrew and Greek and English words that apply to God, eternity and forever, and unto perpetuity and world without end, will apply to every man and woman who is in the bosom of God. I'll settle for that, won't you? If somebody, came up, if somebody came along to me and said, we're going to take you to heaven, but, can you, but you can only be up there for 20 years, I'd be a miserable man. What's the good, what's the good of getting used to only be a place like that and learning to love it and then having to leave it 20 years? But I accept for my own soul and for the souls of the Lord's children that these wondrous words, eternal, everlasting, forever, unto per perpetuity, world without end, I accept the everlastingness of the saints. Why can we believe in our own Im Im immortality? Because God is eternal. That's basic to doctrine of immortality. If God were not eternal, there would be no immortality and no certain future for anybody. We would only be cosmic dust that somehow or another managed to get shifted into human beings or trees or stars and then only to be swept away again and blown into immensity and forgetfulness. But because God is eternal, we have our home in God. We can look forward with calm restfulness to the time that shall be. Right on. I believe there's two things that a man needs to have in his life in order to be successful. The first one is purpose, and the second one is love, and God is love. Thank you. Amen. Right. Come on forward up here, you guys. We're going to pray for him, congregation, if you'll stand with me. Oh, here's your... Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Right on. Love you guys. Love you. Boy, this is, this is a big deal. This is where life changes. Uh, the only thing that's changed, uh, it won't be the whole world, the only thing that's changed is you two. And so the world around you, when you get out there, the world's still going to be there. And so, but you're the one that's changed. So you need to make a difference. This is your chance. So Father, I just ask in Jesus' name that you will bless these men. Watch over them carefully, Lord God. Make sure, Lord God, that they know that you're so real, that you want to do big and wonderful things in their hearts and their lives. I ask, Lord, that you encourage them, Lord God, to do that which is just and that which is right. That in their hearts, Lord God, you will make sure and get them up in the morning and they will perform righteous acts, Lord God, whether it be shoveling the snow out of a widow's driveway or helping somebody, Lord God, to clean up their yard or giving somebody a ride. Or, Lord, I pray that their first action, Lord God, will be to get up in the morning and open the word of God in their life. To get up in the morning and make sure that they open their prayer up to you, Lord. I pray that you will speak to them and they will hear and know that you're God. Provide for them ministry, something to do that is big and strong and that will change people's lives. They both love it. They both want it. So provide, Lord God, that opportunity. Change, Lord God, the Silver Valley. Help them, Lord God. They really need Jesus. Coeur d'Alene needs Jesus. Don't let this be the Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord. And we'll give you the glory and the honor for it. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. God be with you. So, love you both. Thank you. So, be encouraged.